Thanks, everyone. I'm the PI for this project, and uh, uh, James Hutton lead this project along with Eno you know, Stafford, Edinburgh, and CEH as a partners. Um, we have we are talking about interdisciplinary interdisciplinarity. We have a big team here. We have a range of experts, including uh, soil scientists, modelers, data scientists, social scientists. All together, we worked in this project, and. Before I go into this project, I would like to talk about what is the rationale for this project and what we have achieved, what future look like for this. So, so the rationale, if you look at the, we know that climate change is the biggest threat that mankind is facing, and we are all aware of the greenhouse gas emission are responsible for that increase in greenhouse gas emission. If I look at the Scottish greenhouse gas in inventory, uh, where we are operating from, this is uh, the situation in 2019. Uh, the agriculture sits at the third position, uh, third biggest emitter, whereas uh, domestic transport and business are the first and second position. There is a lot of investment is going on in several other sectors. What is the situation in 2020? One, agriculture slowly climbing up to the second position. Uh, in fact, there is a very little progress was made in the last, several last decades in reducing the greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture sector. This is from several decades of data. Even though there are substantial reductions are achieved, not from the agriculture sector, which is lagging behind, and this the parliamentary report in Scotland specifically emphasizing on reducing the greenhouse gas emission from agriculture sector. So uh, we can see overall it's only 1.1% increase, which is very modest. And there is a lot of progress need to be done, even across the UK. Um, if we want to achieve net zero, all the sectors need to contribute and agriculture is not an exception. And agriculture is far lagging behind in the other sectors because there are several limitations associated with it. One of the limitations is lack of credible uh, monitoring verification reporting system. This is one of the limitations in achieving this. So if you look at the background, uh, even though agriculture is a big source of climate, um, greenhouse gas emission, and also it's a great opportunity to sequester the carbon, um, and there is a, Technical potential for carbon sequestration is undisputable, and there's a good consensus among the scientific community on this. And these estimates will vary from study to study, but overall there is a huge potential across in sequestering the carbon and reducing the greenhouse gas emission. And also uh, investing in agriculture and reducing the greenhouse gas emission and increasing carbon sequestration actually provide a resilience to the system. Uh, that's a resilience to the food system, which is very important. Um, but one of the complications for this is soil organic carbon and the soil greenhouse gas emission uh, can, cannot be easily measured, which is a key barrier for implementing uh, and achieving net zero. So there are need for credible and reliable monitoring verification reporting system, especially for national reporting. The way the national reporting is done is quite different from the way that is estimated greenhouse gas emission estimated at the farm level. This is going to pose problem as we go towards 2050 for the greenhouse gas emission estimations because we can declare that farm level they are net zero, at the national level they're not. Again, the national level they may declare as a net zero, but at the farm level not because these methods are not aligned with each other. So one of the uh, aim for this project for us, to, what is the concept that look like if we align all these methods together? Uh, sorry, it's jumping. So, and also one of the barrier for this is emission trading is completely jammed because of the lack of monitoring verification reporting system. Uh, and also the track to uh, progress towards the net zero. The farmers want to know uh, how the farms are performing, not now, what is the direction they are towards the net zero to, uh, when they reach 2050. If they adopt a management practice now, how their emissions going to be by 2050? What is the direction of travel? Uh, currently the market, the whatever the tools available, they are not going to provide that information. They provide only the current state, what actually happening. So there is a clear gap here, which we need to fulfill. So that's the keeping that in mind, bringing all the uh, digital technologies together. We formulate the concept here, where we can bring monitor at different scales uh, using the sensors and process that information in near real time and feed into the models, biogeochemical models, and produce an output that could be used um, and guide the farmers and also uh, feed into the policy. So uh, we deployed sensors at two, three different scales. One is at the plot scale using the soil temperature, moisture, and also the other climate-related uh, sensors. 
And also, at the landscape level, we use the drones to, uh, we run the drones to estimate the biomass of the crop so that we can estimate the carbon inputs into the soil. And, and also at the national scale, we have used the Centlin 1 and 2, we connect it to the uh, uh, Google Drive. Uh, then we looked at the management change, what is happening really. If the farmer say that it's the land is plowed, how can we validate that? Can we validate that information through the remote sensing? So that integration we, pr we produce here. So we integrate all the information, not only that, we integrated all the existing soil, carbon, and climate data for each land parcel level. So what happens by this? If we click on each land parcel, we get all the information together. What did the soil carbon stock with existing information? How the climate going to be? And what is the existing information associated with all the land parcel? So all we get together. So that's an extremely powerful information in order to manage the lands. So then we run this, this one into the model assembly. It's not one single model, because if we use one single model, there's a lot of conceptual uncertainty associated with it. So we want to look at even the conceptual uncertainty. So we use the PKN open source system and then embedded the DNDC, Baskra, and uh, course models. And also we are intended to put more and more models as we go along. Currently three models are operating in this. So we produce an output. As I mentioned here, there are, we are capturing the biophysical characteristic through the sensors, but the still we need to know what's really happening on the ground. For that, we developed an app uh, that's called the Retina app. The app will interact with the end user, that's the farmer or the land managers. We request them to input the land management information. That means if they plow the land, they just need to click one button so that we know that that particular land parcel is plowed and that information will feed back into the system and keep the record of that and rerun the models. Whenever there is a management intervention, the whole system will rerun and produce the output and immediately inform the farmer what is the impact so that we can influence their land management and also uh, provide more information about how, what the intended consequences of it. So uh, the app is used to provide the information to the farmers and also get the information. Now the farmers are using a new software, the Muddy Boots and others, which farm management softwares. If we, we have in future plans to write an API, so if we do that, we don't ask any information to the farmer. So it's all operate without taking any information from the farmer, collecting the biophysical information through the sensors and management information to the software. So everything will be integrated. So this is extremely useful for the many companies. They are, have a lot of farms in their supply chains. They want to reduce their emissions. They need an evidence. And this tool can provide that evidence as we go along. And it's, scientifically, it's very exciting because we can run the models iteratively several times. Um, we learn about the system in a site-specific manner. So our models will get better and better as we go along. More of the system will operate. And this will provide a unique opportunity in this case. So overall, how the system works, we demonstrated this one two farms. Both are James Hutton farms. One is the cropland, another is grassland. We deployed the sensors. We created a re real-time dash dashboard. You can see near our table. You can look, look at that and develop an app. That app will kickstart, run the models, and integrate the other uh, information. Each land parcel level, they get the information. And also we developed an algorithm where we guide the farmer for the soil sampling and we can validate that information. So I'm not going to talk more about this because you can come to the table and look at the app, how that works. So, so what, what are the overall benefits for this uh, Retina technology? Is that it's quite interactive real-time model predictions and also complete data traceability, which is extremely important in terms of net zero and also the carbon markets if they want to. We need to trace where actually the carbon is. Currently that's not. Data collection directly from the field without uh, any input from the farmer. As of now, we are a little bit in fit, but we want to bypass that in the future. Real-time data-driven science bring more credibility and transparency to the carbon markets. Uh, Real-time data visualization for informed decisions at the farm level. And also, we are using tier three models than the tier two. Currently, what are the tools in the market? They use the tier two, which is very average emission factors, which is not necessarily provide the right information at the uh, field level. So, and also it's a pay way to the digital twins. In the next step, we can 
uh, read on the models and identify a tailored management practice that gives the minimum emissions and higher yields because we are able to predict whole carbon nitrogen flows in the system. Uh, crop yields, uh, nitrogen dynamics, and carbon dynamics. That makes it the system very powerful. So throughout this project, we have four levels of engagement throughout this project. So we have engaged with industries. Um, there are several industries who are interested in Shiver Brothers, Nestle, AgriCarbon, Hue Valley. Uh, in fact, we are, set up, we are setting up a field trials with them very soon. And also Syngenta and several other industries we had talks with in this process. And also in public engagement, we have a Royal Highland show we presented in Arabo, Scotland. We have a farmer's engagement. Around 200 farmers visited this one. And we have engagement with them. And a scientific community we have presented across several places. And also we have uh, follow-on funding. Uh, some of the things we have developed in this uh, project led to follow-on funding to that. And also at the policy level, I have given numerous presentations to the DEFRA. And also still we are engaging with them in the soil team and others. And also we have Scottish government we work very closely with. And uh, this is a uh, uh, Scottish um, uh, minister who is very interested, rural development minister. They invested 51 million to the farmers there. They can provide the, they can support the farmers for the soil sampling. So we are trying to utilize our system, how this will fit into the policy in that context. So this is uh, in the picture of Mary Gusion, who is the minister of rural affairs. And looking at the market and the demand associated with it, we decided to launch this one as a, a spin-out company, which is called the Carbon Extras, uh, which we applied for Scottish Enterprise, and we were successful. And they identified this as a high-growth um, spin-out um, company and then supported currently into this. So our vision is to create more, uh, empowering the transition to the net zero and provide the support to the both industry and the farmers at the end. And also we have, six billion hectares in, in the world the, under farming, and it is quite scalable. So there's a huge potential. I think it's all about how we move forward and this in the next step. So in conclusion, overall, Retina fulfills the functions necessary for monitoring, reporting, and verification system to accelerate the efforts towards net zero, and the data we, we create to these processes is enormously useful and to the policy because we can anonymize this data and provide uh, inputs to the policy, which will be real time. Currently, there's a huge lag in the data that come from the field to the policy. So that lag can be substantially reduced through this one. The approach will enable the data flow from the field to the end user and help real time decision making. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>